Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate it. Let's talk a little bit about what is happening with the business. How is the business? What are the biggest challenges you face right now? How are your people? Thank you. Well, first of all, our people are fine. We don't have uh, that many people impacted by uh, the COVID virus. Uh, so I'm happy to report that. Um, of course, it's a challenging time for our business. In all markets, we are impacted to a greater or lesser extent. And while we are starting to see signs of recovery in our largest market, China, and initial signs of governments cautiously lifting restrictions in some Western European markets, other markets remain in lockdown. So, uh, yes, it, it is tough for, uh, for the brewer at this moment of time. Keith, can you, can you extrapolate from what you're seeing in China right now in as, into other markets, as you say? What lessons are you learning from the reopening that we're seeing there? Well, we see at this moment of time, uh, as said, uh, signs of recovery. Many bars and restaurants reopen in a controlled way. Um, and what we see is especially small bars and restaurants uh, they, where there is some less risk of spreading the virus to bigger audiences, there we see our business coming back. Bigger restaurants and bars continue to have strict distancing um, and some uh, uh, other channels like night entertainment, they remain largely closed. So consumers visit uh, especially bars and restaurants, but less frequently than we, but what we have seen before COVID. Yes, and you depend quite strongly on people drinking out, so not exactly the home segment of the population. Are you doing anything to increase your attractiveness for customers that rather drink at home or have to drink at home right now, Case? Well, 25% um, of our volume uh, is coming from uh, what we call out of home or on trade. Um, what we do at this moment of time is really re-engage uh, in a different way with our consumers and customers. What we see, though, is for uh, retail is that the consumers really shop less frequent uh, and move to well-known brands. So they want to uh, be in the, um, uh, in, in the shop only for a relatively short time, uh, take the brand that they know well and take uh, uh, multi-packs. So in that respect, we see as a consequence a different mix in our portfolio. Exactly. So what are you doing to offset the lost revenue from bars and restaurants and breweries that are not selling Carlsberg right now? Is there any way to do that? Can you offset that lost revenue? Yes, we have a, a, a very broad um, a commercial su uh, support uh, that uh, basically means about uh, our sales reps rerouting now and focusing on uh, starting. Um, so basically the ones that normally go for uh, on-trade premises, they now go to uh, retail shops. Um, we move much more uh, towards the digital communication. You can imagine that uh, a business which is very much focusing on socializing, uh, because that's what beer is about, uh, suffers a bit uh, from uh, the current uh, social distancing. For that, we as well uh, adjust mechanisms uh, mechan uh, mechanis that we have for at home. So, for example, our Feldtrussian brand is known for its uh, beer quizzes in the on trade, and these have now been transferred, transferred online. So, I can give you many examples of that, uh, but basically, we are redirecting uh, our business towards uh, the consumer at home. Keys, just kind of picking up on that a little bit, you, do you think that there is enough support currently around the world for the bar and the restaurant sectors? Is there anything you can do? I, I know a few people that run pubs around where I live uh, here in the UK. One of the things that they've been struggling with is the kegs that they've got uh, and trying to find homes for those. Uh, uh, what are you doing in terms of, of dealing with the, with the on-trade uh, and managing the inventory story? Yeah. Yes, well, uh, it's very um, tailor-made, of course, uh, the kind of actions we do. Uh, we have been supporting the on-trade uh, uh, as much as we can uh, with uh, a sort of meaningful activations. Um, one of them, for example, is called Love My Local, 
but it's a scheme we run with independent on-trade outlets for takeaways, so facilitating them in being able to process the orders. Um, another one is uh, an idea called Adopt a CAC. Uh, that's uh, an activation aimed at engaging consumers in supporting the on-trade by earning drinks to uh, redeem when bars open again. Uh, and both have been very well received by the trade in, for example, the UK and Denmark. So we are engaging with our partners to help them through these difficult times, including making sure that they have fresh beer at the moment that they can reopen again. Let's talk a little bit about kind of what happens when economies ultimately reopen. And, 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 and I appreciate normality is probably a long way away. You have at Carlsberg one of the strongest balance sheets out there within the sector. How are you going to leverage that to take advantage of some of the long-term trends that are likely to be altered by COVID-19? Well, first and foremost, it is almost a privilege at this moment of time to have a strong balance sheet. Um, we are weathering the storm of the crisis at this moment of time. Obviously, um, we um, uh, have our ideas what to do at the moment that uh, some assets uh, become available. Uh, but at this moment of time, we first and foremost focus on uh, managing this crisis. But to your point, uh, it is an advantage to have a strong balance sheet at this moment of time. Case, McDonald's came out this morning and said that sales in Asia were actually quite slow, even with you know the Wuhan province reopening and, and so on. Qu quite disappointing to the market. You have nearly 30% of your sales in Asia. What are you doing to prepare for that kind of a reopening environment? Well, Asia uh, at this moment of time has a dual speed, you could argue. Uh, China is really uh, reopening, uh, and we see uh, good figures coming out of uh, China at this moment of time. It's too early to say whether that is uh, basically reloading of the trade or, or basically uh, good secondary sales. Uh, but um, we see some uh, more positive signals coming from, from China. The other part where we are strong uh, uh, at in, in China, uh, sorry, in uh, Asia, uh, for example, Nepal uh, and uh, India, uh, Laos, uh, these markets are basically just uh, either still in a lockdown or just opening uh, again. So there uh, the sales is very slow. So we saw dismal GDP data out of Europe today, Case. 55% of your sales are Western Europe. What are you doing to hold on to customers that may be switching to economy brands because of the coronavirus, lack of employment and so on? So the good news of our portfolio is that uh, we have a, a, quite a number of very strong local power brands uh, like uh, uh, Feldflesch in Switzerland, Falcon, in Sweden, Ringnes in Norway, Kronenburg in France. So that helps in, in terms of, at the moment that there is a crisis, uh, consumers tend uh, to choose the brands they really know well. Uh, what we see, however, is that indeed they are less uh, focused on uh, premium uh, parts of uh, these brands, but more um, in multi-packs. Uh, and for that, we, um, we really see some changes in our portfolio uh, and prepare for that. Another part of the business that we see really uh, growing well is uh, uh, alcohol-free beer. Uh, that was already a trend which was uh, uh, really uh, very positive for the beer producers, uh, but we see that uh, accelerating a bit. If that is because of an underlying trend that people are more focused on health, uh, we don't know yet, maybe a bit too early, but it is uh, a positive sign for, for our portfolio. Keys, uh, just kind of coming back to the issue of the balance sheet and actually what you just said about low alcohol, alcohol, low alcohol beers. I, are there opportunities out there? Coming into this, I'm just wondering if there are any assets that you were looking at and thinking about and wondering or, about whether or not there were trends that you should latch onto. As you say, the low alcohol question is definitely there. Were there any assets out there that you were kind of looking at and thinking, that looks good right now, there's a trend I should take advantage of? 
Well, I think you, you probably would be disappointed if you would not look at it, and you probably would be surprised if you would talk about it. Um, so uh, I come back on what I said earlier. Uh, it is good to have a strong balance sheet that gives us degrees of freedom uh, in the coming uh, 12 to 18 months. But at this moment of time, we very much focus on repairing our business uh, in this storm.